Hello, golfers. I'm George Knapp, Video Sports Productions' man on the golf course, presenting Judy Rankin's Golf Tips. In this cassette, Judy will show you some tips that should take four or five strokes off your golf score. Mrs. Rankin has won more than 20 LPGA golf tournaments and was the leading money winner in 1976 and 1977. Golf Digest selected her as the Player of the Year in 1977, and last year, Golf Magazine named her the best putter on the tour. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Judy T. Rankin. Hi, George. Good morning, Judy. How are you? How are you going to start the show? Well, we're going to start today with the little shots around the green and try to help people really shave some strokes off their score. And I think it's particularly valuable for the ladies because so often they can't reach a green in regulation. And if we can save a par, we save a lot of shots. Sounds good. Here we're going to work on a little chip shot that's just four or five feet off the edge of the green. And actually, the club that you select should be determined strictly by how much green you have to work with. If the pin is a long way from you, you can really let the ball run and use a less lofted club. Or if it's a little closer to you, you might want to take a club with a little bit more loft. I have a 9-on in my hand right here. The pin's only maybe 20 feet from me. And I line the blade up at the hole, and I stand with a fairly open stance so I have a little freedom to swing the club out at the hole. And there's not a great deal of wrist movement, but just enough so that you can develop some touch and feel, which is really the most important part of any time you play around the green or on the green. And I just try to keep the club face moving toward the hole at all times, whereas in a golf swing, the club face would be releasing and turning over. In a little chip shot, the club face just keeps moving toward the target. I don't actually try to strike down on the ball or up on the ball, but I try to make the club move along the terrain, like so. And I find with a little bit more lofted club, I have a little bit more control over what the ball does because it doesn't hit the ground and really run and get away from me. I think a lot of poor shots are played by using the wrong club in this kind of a situation. If I try to strike too hard down on the ball, I'm either going to pop it up and maybe hit behind it and not really ever get the ball to the hole. You see, and there's no control over how the ball rolls after it hits the ground. But if I can swing the club just back and along the terrain, it's more apt to do the same thing more often. And that's what really makes you a good chipper, is to be able to repeat yourself time after time. And that's how you develop a touch that enables you to get this shot down in two. You know, on so many of the new golf courses, the greens are just built very, very large. And many times you're left with a shot that maybe you're just two or three feet off the edge of the green, but you're 60 feet from the hole. And it's very valuable if you can take a club with very little loft. I'm using a six iron here. You might be more comfortable with even a five or a four iron. And keep the ball running low along the ground like a putt so that you can roll it close to the hole and still make your par. The important thing is keep your weight on your left side because we're going to try to strike the ball solidly along the terrain Make the ball not fly too high in the air, and then roll like a putt would roll. And the advantages of this shot, that's the best one I've hit today, the advantages of this shot are that you're not throwing the ball up in the air where you have to worry about whether the ball is going to stop or whether the ball is going to go. You're playing a shot to run. You know that when it hits the ground, the ball will turn over and roll and run just like a putt. So we have a, very, a club with very little loft. The hands are slightly ahead of the ball. The ball is still in the same position off the left heel. And we just take it back and low to the ground. And the ball runs like a putt. And we don't ever have to worry about throwing it up in the air or halfway to the hole and having it bite on us all of a sudden. Wow. Get. You know, many times you end up in a spot around the green where, unfortunately, you have a bad lie, you don't have any grass under the ball, and a chip shot would really be rather risky because it'd be hard to hit the ball solid, and you take the chance of hitting the shot heavy, hitting behind the ball and not getting it to the hole, and maybe even blading it completely over the green. And oftentimes, in a situation like that, the best thing to do is use what 
we have all heard since we first started playing is the Texas Wedge, which is our putter. And you really don't have to stroke this any differently than you would a normal uh, long putt, other than I find if I hold the putter a little more firmly, I am less apt to not get the ball over the fringe of the green without enough acceleration. So I hold the putter just a little more firmly and go ahead and take my normal stroke. And there is a good chance we may get the ball down in two this way, whereas the other way, the percentages are really against us. You have to play rough in the lie like this with no grass under the ball and even a little sand as we're near a bunker. The chances of pitching the ball close to the hole are really very slim, and the chance of hitting a very bad shot are in your favor. But playing this shot, you're not going to hit a real bad shot, and you may hit a very good shot. You have to watch that between you and the edge of the green, that you have a somewhat smooth area to roll the ball. But even if there are spots where the ball's going to bounce up, you're still better off than trying to play the pitching wedge or a little chip shot with a seven iron off of bare ground. So try not to make the shot any more difficult than it is. In other words, it's just another putt, except you're going to hold the putter a little bit more firmly and just key on hitting the ball solid. Maybe it will go in the hole. Who no. knows? Close. Well, here we are faced with a shot that most people walk up to and their knees knock together and they shake with fear. <laughs> they then pull out their pitching wedge to throw the ball over a bunker and stop it somewhere near the hole, which maybe you don't have a lot of room to do. And the first mistake was, I think, pulling out the pitching wedge. I don't think many people realize what a valuable tube of a sand wedge is, aside from the bunker. So I would take a sand wedge right here, and it becomes much, much easier to throw the ball high and soft over the bunker, and with a little bit of spin, not a great bit, deal of spin, because the shot is high and soft, I can stop the ball somewhere near the hole. But the real help on this shot is the club I've chosen. Now, I hit the ball just a little bit to the left of the hole, but the distance was perfect, and I did not go through a great deal of work trying to stop the ball. Have we got a golf ball here? The important things in the technique of this shot are, first of all, do not play the ball too far back in your stance. That's one of the most common errors that I see, and all that will do is make the ball go low and hard. You want to keep the ball still in the same ball position as almost all of our chip and pitch shots, which is somewhere right off the left heel. The hands are fall slightly ahead of the ball, and you're holding the club short for more control and better feel. When I swing the club back, there is a little bit of movement in my hands once again because I'm trying to develop a touch. And as I come through the ball, I'm going to try very hard not to let the club head pass up my hands, not to do this. I'm not going to try to help it in any way. I'm simply going to stroke through the ball with the club face going toward the target. And because it's a sand wedge that I'm playing the shot with, I do not have to do a lot of things different to pull this shot off. It's just the same as if I were hitting it with a pitching wedge, only I have the advantage of more loft and a higher shot that is going to stop much sooner without putting a lot of spin on it. Now, most people get up to this shot, and in their effort to really put a lot of backspin on it, they pick their hands up real fast, and there they are, right in the bunker, the very thing that they were afraid of to start with. And the only good thing I can think about that is, if you play with your sandwich, at least you don't have to change club. You can just step in the bunker <laughs> and hit it out again. But in all seriousness, all of the good players that you watch play these kind of shots so well are playing them with a sandwich. And there's no reason that the higher handicapper can't learn to do that. Now, to hit the ball that high and that soft with a pitching wedge would really be a lot of work and is not a percentage shot. So learn to use your sand wedge around the green, and particularly learn to use it when you want to throw the ball up over something and stop it fairly quickly.
Okay, many times you're going to find yourself in a bunker alongside the green. The ball is sitting in a nice lie. You don't have any particular problems to contend with other than getting the ball of the bunker and trying to save a par. This is probably the only shot in the game where you get the feeling that you're going to swing the club across the ball rather than through to the target. From the outside to the inside rather than from the inside to the outside or straight through to the target. And the reason for this being is you want the feeling that the club is going to go under the ball and be pulled this way. You never want to let the club head pass up your hands in this manner. You want to try to always keep your hands leading the club face and in that way the face stays open at all times. It throws the ball high, it gives it action, and you actually have a chance to stop the ball at a certain point on the green. To achieve this, I set up to the ball again with the ball slightly off my left heel. My stance is a little bit open, and that is to encourage the club to come this way and not this way. The object when I actually swing at the ball would be to hit slightly behind the ball and have the club go through the sand to the target. I think there's been way too much emphasis put on striking down. Everybody that I play with in pro and so on, it seems that they're all chopping into the sand. And that does not necessarily make for a good sand shot. So here we will try to execute it. Taking the club up slightly on the outside, hitting behind the ball, under it, and to the inside of the line of flight. The tempo of this stroke is extremely important, and if you can get a consistent tempo back and through, it's going to help you to develop a touch where you can actually put the ball close to the hole when you need to. But the key thing with playing the bunker shot off of a relatively good lie is never let the face turn over. Keep it always moving so that the face is in the same position when it finishes the swing as it was when you addressed the ball. I better quit on that one. Oftentimes you'll find yourself in a bunker on the uphill slope of the face of the bunker, and it's really not a great deal different than a normal bunker shot, except the problem that it creates is it's difficult to hit the ball a long distance. And I always grip down the club even a little bit shorter when the ball is on an uphill slope in the bunker. And the ball may be played just slightly farther ahead than what I would have done on a flat lie. But the biggest thing is I try to accelerate the club a little bit faster because I always have a problem with hitting the ball as far as I would like to. So I'm going to take the same swing that I've described to you only maybe with a little bit more speed. But the stroke itself is just the same. Oh. Now we're really faced with a difficult shot. I think the downhill shot in the bunker is probably the hardest to play and the one that could come out the worst if you don't do it correctly. Uh, Naturally, because it's a downhill lie, you have to move the ball back a little bit in your stance, a little bit more towards the center of your stance. But the key thing in this bunker shot and every bunker shot is we are not trying to strike the golf ball. We are trying to strike ever so slightly behind the ball and through the sand under the ball. That's what makes the downhill shot so difficult. So you have to really key on staying down with the downhill shot until the swing is finished. The stroke is still the same. You're going to try to swing the club up on the outside, through to the inside, keeping the blade going towards the target at all times. OK, so we've changed our ball position. And we are really keying on staying with this shot until it's finished. Now, the trajectory of the ball is slightly lower. 
and it is more difficult to put spin on the ball and stop it quickly. So just remember that when you're playing a downhill shot and use it to your advantage whenever you can. Many times we find that we've almost hit a great shot to the green, but instead of it being very close to the hole, it's just in the edge of the bunker and buried. And it, it, it looks, <laughs> it scares you to death when you see it. But the problem with this shot is not really getting out of the bunker like you may think. It is a difficult shot to get close to the hole, but it is not difficult to get it out of the bunker. In the sand shots we've gone through before, you should always lay the face just slightly open because we're trying to get the action of going under and through the ball. In this type of bunker shot where the ball is really buried, you want to do just the reverse. You want to close the club face. You move the ball back in your stance, regardless of the lie, uphill, flat, downhill, whatever. If it's buried, move the ball back in your stance. And you're going to break your hands very quickly away from the ball and just hit down on the ball as hard as you can. Now, I'm not a great advocate of even using the term hit down, but in this particular shot, you must hit down behind the ball as hard as you can. The ball will pop up out of the bunker and it will be running. It is not a shot that you can stop quickly. So when you play the shot, plan on leaving the ball 15 or 20 feet to run. Okay, now we're going to break quickly, we're going to hit down on the ball, and we're going to keep going through. Yes, nice. And don't play these shots into the wind. <laughs> <laughs> There is one little trick to playing a buried shot in the sand that may help you on occasion when the pin is close to you and you have very little green to work with. And that is, don't close the face as severely as you would normally. In fact, you can just almost keep it square to the target. And when you hit down into the sand, don't make any effort to have the club come through the target. Hit down into the sand and leave the club there. And as a result, the ball Many times, I won't guarantee this shot, but many times will pop out of the sand and be kind of a dead ball that doesn't get away from you running. Now that's about as quiet as you're ever going to hit a ball out of a buried lie. The fried egg lie is one that <laughs> the ball hits in the bunker, it tries to bury itself and it doesn't really succeed. All it does is spread the sand out from around the ball. And it makes it difficult to play the shot because you're hitting off of a harder surface underneath the ball and you really don't have sand right up behind the ball to hit behind into and through the shot. What I try to do playing the shot is I have the ball back just a little bit more than I normally would with a good lie in the bunker, which would be just behind my left heel. Rather than closing the club way up like I would in a really buried lie, I keep it just almost square, maybe open just slightly. And I am still going to try to strike just behind the ball and through the shot like I would the shot from a good lie in this bunker. The biggest difference is it is very difficult to stop this ball quickly with the best of strokes. So leave yourself room for the ball to run. And it is very important that you do strike behind the ball and go under and through the ball, or you're going to hit the low shot that sees the bunker on the other side of the green. So I'm going to try to take the same type of backstroke. Every shot has been the same type of backstroke, except for the severely buried ball. And I'm going to try to hit just behind the ball and through the sand, knowing that the ball will run. And it, once again, is not a real easy shot to get close to the hole consistently, but it is not a difficult shot to get out of the bunker and on the green. I tried. These little four foot putts that we leave ourselves sometimes after a long putt or maybe a good shot off the edge of the green are awfully important to make and I think they really determine how you score. You can play awfully well and if you don't make these putts consistently, you're not going to get your score down. So first let's go through some of the bad things you can do putting these putts. One would be the person who does not take the putter straight back but takes the putter way in here and as a result goes from in here to out there. And we've missed the putt way to the right. Another way to miss the putt to the right would be almost the reverse. The person who takes the putter back 
way on the outside and more or less cuts the ball and puts spin on it, which makes the ball miss on the right. And the same things would be true missing the putt to the left, only you have the reverse happening with the putter head, which is you're always turning it and to the left, always trying to steer the ball into the hole with your hands. In other words, no faith. What you have to do is line the putter up the best you can at the hole. Give yourself the greatest margin for error by setting the putter down at the center of the hole. And then try to make the putter blade go back, straight back and straight through and into the middle of the hole. There are many different ways to putt. There are hand putters, there are arm putters. I'm really not gonna attempt to tell you which would be the best. I think putting is very much a matter of feel and what works for you and gives you the greatest sensitivity in your hands for speed. But the important thing is the putter must travel straight back and straight through. And you must choose a line and if that line be straight in, which most of the time it will be on a putt this distance, a four feeter inside, once you choose that line, you must believe it and not try to help the ball or manipulate the putter head to steer the ball into the hole. Just straight back and not straight through. It's important when you putt short putts or any putt for that matter, that the speed of the putter stays consistent through the ball. You cannot let the putter head slow up or you will fall into the pitfalls of the putter going right and left and causing the ball to go offline. Now here we are quite a long way from the pin and it's really necessary to get this ball down in two to roll our first putt close. You can really improve your short putting by not having to putt so many short putts. In other words, take this long putt and learn to roll it for a tap in. Give it a chance to fall in the hole, but this is not the kind of putt you're gonna approach thinking I need to make this. You're gonna try to roll it close. And the best way to try to roll it close is by using the feel that you have in your hands. The way for that to work is to use your eyes. Your eyes are the best tool you have for rolling a long putt close to the hole. And instead of trying to think I have to hit it this hard or I have to hit it this easy, better to let your eyes really look over the line of the putt and let them begin to register and let the touch that you have in your hands take over. So I'm not really going to think I have to hit it so hard or so easy. I have looked at the length of the putt and now I'm going to let the sensitivities that I have let me hit it that distance. I would have read it a little bit better. But I think most people who are very poor long putters are poor long putters because they are always giving thought to how hard they have to strike the ball to hit at that distance. And it, of course it is important to read the putt somewhat well, but the most important thing on a long putt is speed. If you can hit the ball the right speed, you're gonna put it somewhere within a foot or two around the hole. Maybe just a little bit farther than that. <laughs> I never said this was easy. I just said it was the right way. <laughs> okay, so you read the putt. You line the putter up, and the rest of it is a matter of touch. Stay up. <laughs> Now we have a 10 foot putt for a birdie and it would just really be nice to make this. And the first thing we have to think about when trying to make this putt is if the putt is going to move right or left. I think reading a putt is of some importance. I think many people put too much importance on it. I think we all have an instinct for which way the ground is sloping. And I think sometimes to let some of those instincts take over help you more than using mechanical things to read a putt for you. One of the things that you oftentimes see on television watching tournament golf or maybe even amongst your friends is the plumb bob. And the way that you do this is to line the putter up right with the center of the ball down lower. 
Just let the putter hang free from two fingers and use your best eye, your dominant eye, and the putter shaft up above will fall to one side or the other of the hole. Supposedly where the putter falls to the right or left of the hole is where you should start the ball out. Um, I don't know that this method is completely accurate, but to some people it's a bit of a security blanket, and if it helps you, then it's not a bad thing to do. I think the most important thing about reading greens is you have to realize that the speed that the ball rolls has a great deal to do with how much the ball will break right or left. So it now becomes important. You have decided that this putt moves maybe just slightly to your left. It becomes important to have a decision made in your mind whether you're going to hit the putt very firm at the hole or whether you're going to play this little bit of break. So before you ever step up to the ball, try to have a decision in your mind about where you're going to hit the ball and how you're going to hit it, whether it's going to be a firm putt or a dying putt or whatever. Anyway, so once you've made a decision about where you're going to start the ball and how firm you feel like you want to hit it, let your touch and feel take over. Just remember to keep the putter straight back, straight through. I think we were robbed. Oftentimes, the case is you've hit the ball a poor speed for the line you chose. So that's why I'm saying when you are reading a putt, remember that speed has a great deal to do with how the ball will react. I'm not going to try to tell anybody anything really mechanical about putting because I really do think it's a matter of personal preference and what gives you the best feel in your hands. But I do think a very important thing is the putter going straight back and straight through. And secondly, I find that there are more good putters who keep the putter relatively low throughout the stroke. I don't, you don't see a whole lot of putters who pick the putter, good putters who pick the putter up high off the ground. For any golfers who may be interested in additional instruction, look for another video sports production, Golf Tips with Bob Rosberg.